Thank you for joining us for our webinar today, Reaching Your Goals with Google Analytics. The focus today is all about return on investment. We want to help get your Google Analytics account set up to get the most actionable data with an added emphasis on AdWords and marketing campaigns. Specifically, we want to walk through setting up goal conversions and e-commerce to start tracking your conversion data. Then we'll shift focus slightly to ensuring you're getting sufficient data from AdWords by linking your AdWords account to analytics. With marketing campaigns accounted for, we'll finish the webinar with exciting new opportunities using newly set up goal tracking. Let's open the webinar by trying to define how one measures success with Google Analytics. Why do you have a website? What are you hoping users do on your site? What is the point of your marketing campaigns? The connection that we're hoping to develop in this webinar is how web analytics, and specifically Google Analytics conversion tracking, tie into your underlying business objectives. Each website has a reason for existing, and every marketing campaign has an underlying end goal behind it. Once we can identify exactly what the purpose is, or what the end goals are, we can start to map these to goals or conversion actions in Google Analytics. Different sites and businesses will drive visitors to take different actions on the site. Purchases, leads, subscriptions, or engagement. If you're an online retailer, you're driving visitors to make a purchase. If you're an insurance company, you're driving visitors to submit basic information about themselves to create leads. If you're running a blog, you're trying to keep visitors on the site longer to engage and consume site content. If we can boil down your business objective to one unique action on your website, then we can translate that action into a Google Analytics goal and thus a site conversion. Business objectives become desirable actions on the site, which we can map to goals and conversions. Google Analytics helps you measure success by quantifying the number of users who've completed desired actions on your site. Once you set up goals, analytics reports can tell you the dollar value of your sales or the average number of minutes users spent watching videos. In order to get the most out of your analysis, it's helpful to think about small goals and big goals. So if you're an internet retailer, your big objective might be earn $50,000 in revenue. Smaller goals along the way could be to increase your average order volume or to increase the number of users who purchase. If you're a consulting firm, you may learn that you need to have 20 lead forms filled out in order to get five qualified leads from the company. And it's also important to remember that goals can be multi-layered. A user who signs up for a newsletter may later make a purchase. Now that we've discussed identifying business objectives and mapping them back to site actions, let's walk through setting up goals in Google Analytics. So what is a goal in Google Analytics? A goal is either a visit to a specific page of your site or a specific action completed on your site. A goal conversion or completed goal would occur when a user views this designated goal page or completes the goal action. Any one of the examples listed on this slide could be a goal conversion. For non-e-commerce sites, goal conversions are the primary metric for assessing how well a site fulfills business objectives. Let's take a look at how to set up goals. The first thing you need to do once you've logged into your account is select the website profile that you'd like to set up goals for. Then click on the gear icon in the top right corner which controls the profile settings. Once the setting page loads, click on the Goals tab in the second row of tabs, and then click on the plus sign right next to Goal. Two quick notes before proceeding. First, you need to be an account administrator in order to set up goals in a profile. Second, all the screenshots that you'll see in this presentation are taken from the newest version of Google Analytics. Most likely, your account has been automatically defaulted to this new version, but if not, we recommend that you start using this version today. To do so, look in the top right corner of your screen. Right next to your login email, there should be a link that says New Version. Click that link and it will bring you into the new version of Analytics. Once there, 
You also have the option to make the new version default. Next, you need to specify the type of goal you're creating. There are four different goal types to choose from. URL destination, time on site, pages per visit, and event. URL destination triggers a goal conversion when a visitor views a key page of your site. Time on site triggers a conversion when a visitor spends a defined amount of time on your site in one session. Pages per visit records a goal when a visitor views a defined amount of pages in one session. Finally, event goals record conversions based on analytics event tracking, which we'll chat about in just a minute. You would choose URL destination if your goal is to drive your site visitors to an individual page, such as a thank you page. This goal is frequently used by lead generation sites to capture total lead volume. You would choose time on site or pages per visit if you're more interested in determining site engagement. This is a frequent goal for brand advertisers, blogs, or any site that is measuring user engagement as a means of success. You would choose the event goal if you utilize event tracking in Google Analytics and want to track visitor interaction on your site. For example, you can use event tracking to track file downloads or visitor interaction with videos and other media. If you're interested in learning more about event tracking, I'd recommend doing a quick search in the Help Center to find our overview. After you've input all goal information, Google Analytics will begin tracking goal conversions and conversion rates for you. Similar to conversion tracking in Google AdWords, you can input an optional monetary value for each goal conversion. This allows you to obtain a more robust return on investment measurement than just conversion rate. Let's take a look at how goals are actually reported in Google Analytics. As soon as you set up your first goal, Google Analytics will begin tracking and reporting on the associated visitor's behavior. You can find the report from the Standard Reporting tab. Just navigate to Conversions and Goals on the left-hand side of the screen. The Standard Goal Report in Google Analytics provides the following information. Total number of goal completions. Total goal value, if you specify this in the setup process. Conversion rate. Abandonment rate if you set up a funnel, which we'll discuss in just a minute. This report helps you understand the total contributions that goals make to your business. Additionally, we can break down total goal completions, value, and conversion rate by traffic source or campaign. If you navigate back to the traffic sources report after recording goal conversions, you'll notice that we now display conversion rates and other conversion metrics. This is some of the richest information that Google Analytics provides and makes reporting that much more useful. Please note that if you've just set up goals for the first time, you'll need to wait until some data has been collected in order to see meaningful information in the reports. Let's take a look at how to get more information from your conversion process. The funnel. We just mentioned abandonment rate and funnels. So what exactly is a funnel? A funnel is a series of web pages that your visitors must go through in sequence in order to reach the goal page. The purpose of tracking these pages is to see how efficiently your pages direct visitors to your goal so you can understand how your visitors become clients. This helps you to optimize your conversion process by identifying where visitors enter and exit your conversion process. If any of the funnel pages are overly complicated or not designed to be user friendly, then you will see significant drop off and lower conversion rates. You can track drop-off rates on pages leading to a goal using the Funnel Visualization Report in the Goals section. We'll take a look at that in just a minute. In order to determine which steps you should set up in your funnel, try to envision what defined process a visitor must go through in order to complete a business objective on your site. If there is a standard pattern or process that visitors must move through, we would recommend tracking each of those pages in the funnel. For example, if you're an online retailer, most visitors that make a purchase will hit a standard sequence of pages before completing that purchase. They'll hit the landing page, the shopping cart page, the checkout page where they put in billing details, an order confirmation page, payment and delivery detail page, and then finally the thank you page. By setting these pages as part of the funnel, we can identify where visitors are dropping off of the conversion process. As an example, 
Suppose that you have 1,000 visitors that enter the first step of the funnel, but only 10 visitors make it to the final step. That's a conversion rate of 1% and an abandonment rate of 99%. If we're able to improve the worst page in the conversion process and move an additional 10 visitors to convert, that doubles our conversion rate based off of one change to one page. Now let's take a look at how this is reported in Google Analytics. You can find the Funnel Visualization Report by clicking into the Conversions Report in the left-hand navigation menu, then into Goals, and finally into Funnel Visualization. The Funnel Visualization Report provides a graphical representation of the points at which users are entering and exiting your funnel process. For each step of the funnel, you're able to view the number and percentage of visitors entering the funnel, exiting the funnel, and proceeding to the next step of the funnel. Ultimately, you're provided with a total number of visitors making it through the entire conversion process. This allows you to easily identify which steps in your funnel are leading to the highest percentage of visitor drop-offs and, as mentioned earlier, work to optimize the conversion process for your website. Now that we've discussed goals and funnels, let's move on to the robust reporting available by implementing e-commerce tracking for Google Analytics. Implementing Google Analytics e-commerce is a more involved process than setting up goals or funnels, but it provides a much richer and more actionable set of data. Instead of tracking total number of conversions and a static goal value, e-commerce allows you to track transactions and the order value of every purchase made on your site. If you're an online retailer, or if your conversion process pulls in dynamic monetary values, e-commerce is a must. It gives so much more data than static goal tracking and static goal values. If your site is more focused on visitor engagement or conversions that don't contain any monetary values, your site would be better served by goals. If you fall into this group, stay with us because we'll be discussing exciting opportunities for everyone in the last section. Now we'll discuss how to set up e-commerce tracking. To do so, there are three steps you'll need to complete. First, you need to enable e-commerce reporting within your analytics website profile. This is as simple as going to the settings and changing a no to a yes for whether your site is an e-commerce site. Next, there's additional tracking code that must be added to your receipt or thank you page in order to capture the details of your transactions. The e-commerce code works by integrating with your shopping cart platform to capture and report on all of the values rendered by the shopping cart platform. We don't want to get too invested in the technical details during the presentation, so we would recommend sharing this code with your webmaster for help implementing the JavaScript. You can click or copy the short link here to get more information about the implementation process. As soon as you've set up e-commerce tracking, Google Analytics will begin tracking and reporting on transactions. To get to the e-commerce report, go to the conversion section. You'll find this in the menu on the left-hand side of the screen. The e-commerce report in Google Analytics provides a lot of information. Total number of transactions, total transactional revenue, e-commerce conversion rate, average order value, total number of unique purchases, and total quantity of items purchased. The e-commerce report helps you understand the total bottom line revenue contribution to your business, as well as the performance of different products and product categories on your site. Additionally, we can break down total transactions, revenue, and conversion rate by traffic source or campaign, just as we did for goal conversions. If you click into the traffic sources report, you can now navigate to the e-commerce tab and view conversion rate, revenue, average order value, and per visit value by source, campaign, or even keyword. This improves upon standard goal reporting and provides more actionable and precise metrics. Please note that if you've just set up e-commerce for the first time, you'll need to wait until some data has been collected in order to see meaningful information in the reports.